All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gents. I've never done that before. Pay attention. Just so you know, I did this video yesterday. I finished it about 2 o'clock. It's now 2.15. I've been uploading it ever since. Ever since! Ladies and gentlemen. It's been saying 32 minutes for the last 15 minutes. Now, hold on, just to make sure y'all understand. I completed this bit, not that one. Where you at? Uh-oh. Oh, my God! Oh, 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 my God! Give me one second. Uh, I hate this one. No, nah, this is the old one. I have to go into the right video folder, so this ain't it. There it is right there. At 116. So about 130 is when I completed this video. I started uploading it about 15 minutes ago. It's at 34%. Oh, look at that. It dropped to 20 minutes. 35%. Oh, look at that. It dropped to 20 minutes. This video will take less time to upload than this video did at 97%. With three percentage points left, now it's been at 98 before. It was at 98% over an hour ago, and then it dropped down to 88%. As I said, the information in that video, ladies and gentlemen, fire! It's on fire, y'all. That's right. It was on fire. Somebody had to put it out. And that was me. I put it out there. And the people whom the information is for will get it. The rest of you guys are not going to get the information. You're going to think, oh, well, no, whatever. Ah, just finished the milk. The last of the milk. Fruity Pebbles and that milk right there is like... It's like drinking a ray of sunshine. I'm walking on sunshine. Ow! Oh, and it shall feels good. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I know, as I've said before, I promise you, I am not doing anything special. This is who I am as a person. The antics, everybody and their grandmama who's ever talked to me, from the time I was a child until now, knows that this is my personality. Okay, by the way, in the other video just before this one, I talked about how my cell phone, I still don't have a signal. Literally, I don't have a signal on that phone. Same phone, Ocutel, as the phone that's connected that we're getting the internet signal from. Same phone! It's got a signal, but this phone. That is my main phone. This is my homeboy. It ain't got no signal. Okay. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, why the phone doesn't have a signal is beyond me. So you know what I tried to do? I tried to use the same phone to call T-Mobile. Say, hey, look here, fools. Y'all say that I have unlimited. Pay attention. You all are saying I have unlimited data up then you say up to 50 pay attention up to 50 gigabytes at 4g then guess what they told me oh but you don't have 4g in your area okay well then why are you throttling my speed when it gets to 50 gigabytes if i don't have 4g in my area don't you guarantee me 50 gigabytes at 4g so how come I never get the 4G because you documented I don't have 4G in my area, but then you throttle me. What the flying fart? Farts don't fly. Yes, they do. When you look them in the eye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take care of T-Mobile in its own due time. Now, what we need to talk about. Everybody, do you know what we need to talk about? We don't need to talk about how 
since I've been here, this is still stayed at 20 minutes, and yet this is at, in five minutes, this has gotten all the way to 59%. Five minutes! 59%. This is still at 98%. What in the world? Because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's the information in this video. Like I said, the people who understand will understand. The people who it's not meant for will not understand. Look, I've told you guys from the very beginning, when I do videos, I know that the people whom need the information will get the information. I can't begin to tell you how many people, man, I just, I just found your videos. I didn't know. I just found you. And I'm so glad I found you because I was looking for this information and sure enough, or another lady said, you know, I was sitting up here thinking about such and such, such and such and was going through this problem and then you do a video on this stuff. The moment I'm thinking about it and I'm about to sit up here and try to ask you if you can do a video about it and you do a video about it. Well, this is not no, not nothing else other than psychology. This video is going to be up before this one. And I don't want that, but you guys will get it, okay? Because it's still at 98%. There is no reason for this video to still be at 98% and this one to be at 66%. No reason when they're being uploaded through the exact same, pay attention, exact same internet stream. Makes no sense. Oh, look, 99%. Look at that. Makes no sense. All right, let's talk about something, ladies and gentlemen, shall we? Now, I went to I went to this site right here, and before it even shows up, I'm gonna tell all of you: you need to be careful. Okay, I'm gonna say it again: you need to be careful. The reason why you need to be careful when you're dealing with videos like this and you're listening to this and you follow this you see I watch these guys approach these officers the only problem is they are invading their personal space they do have a right to put their hands on you to get some distance they have a right to defend themselves everyone has a area of three feet around them these officers were approaching I mean they were approaching the vehicle that the officers have under their charge, under their control, that they are responsible for. They were looking in the vehicle. The officers came up and said, hey, what are you guys doing? These individuals got rather obstinate with the officers. Now, mind you, as I've said from day one, I do respect the uniform, no matter what it is. It could be a janitor's uniform. I will always respect the uniform because that's what I've been taught. That's my mama taught me that. So I pay attention to what my mama told me. My mama done told me. Okay. I need you guys to get this. There are a lot of people out there doing what they call First Amendment videos where they are confronting police officers. Ladies and gentlemen, stop doing that. I don't care if you're not black and you're not afraid of getting shot. Please stop doing that. It makes no sense because you don't understand what's coming. It ain't about your rights. You guys think you guys have rights. You don't have rights, people. You waive those rights, not because you're in public. You waive those rights by consenting to this government that you're in. You have privileges, okay? That's the 14th Amendment. You have privileges. I ain't nobody's 14th. It doesn't matter what you say. Don't you understand? Don't you all get that? Ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't get that? No, this is not a particular guy's website. This is a website that takes all of these videos and puts them on the same site from all over the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, do you guys not know that the police are taking these videos and they're training on this? And they're figuring out ways how to handle you, technicalities on how to handle you. See, I went back to this video with this guy because I was interested. I wanted to see the court case that he was involved in. That's what I was interested in. So I went underneath the video, and 
not to know your rights one. Uh, you got to extend it. Okay, and I click there. But this one, I believe, is where he might be associated. But I downloaded several documents from this site. And so I'm going to let you guys know about it. As a matter of fact, we're going to let you guys know about that. And then we're going to open up this one, the one that's opening up in the background. So give me a second. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, I just read a little bit more about this site, Constitutional Law Group. I give these individuals some credit. Let me tell you why. It says, please go to resources, take action, videos, and breaking video news tab where most of your questions will be answered. All of our information is free of charge. This is a labor of love for humanity. See, that right there, they get my respect automatically. I don't care if, look, hold on. I don't care if all of their information is wrong. Information should be free, ladies and gentlemen. This is a place of study. To study, to learn, to share knowledge, wisdom, and procedure, among other things. I like that. I didn't read it the first time. I just went and went and went. We no longer are accepting calls through our toll-free number at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we should be putting that on our site, but we're going to start to accept calls. Okay, I just have to train the staff because, see, some of you guys are going to be asking them questions. Oh, God. That they don't handle. They don't. They can't answer. They can only answer questions about this or that. So it's a very technical thing. They're not me. Okay, for instance, I spoke with a young man today. He has been dealing with the courts and a couple other things. He's written me in the past. And I stayed away because I handled an arbitration for this person. I didn't want anybody to think it was a conflict of interest or anything like that. However, it's been taken care of. Okay? It's been taken care of, the arbitration. However... Okay. However, we talked this afternoon because he was producing documents and putting them into the court. And I called him up and I said, you know what? I just want you to brace yourself because I'm going to give you some information and some of it you're not going to like. And he says, okay. And he listened and I critiqued him. And I told him what I thought he could do to improve. And you know what he didn't do? He didn't get offended. He did not get offended. You know what he did? He took the information in stride. And you want to know something? Then I decided to just open on up and give him all the information he was asking about. Even tell him what he needed to do in order to perfect his trust. He was setting up a particular trust that he didn't do everything that he should have and i told him no you need to do this you need to do that and you need to do this because that's what they require oh wait he was appreciative of that information then i told him hey had a sign on my refrigerator though sign on my refrigerator though pay attention sign on my refrigerator though said what is the most important thing at this moment and that's what I got up to every morning. And so I had to take care of what's the most important thing at that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the most important thing at this moment? The most important thing at this moment is for you all to understand that there are places where you can get information to help in your situation. Those of you who have mortgages, give me about seven minutes, and we're going to talk about you exclusively. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the documents that they have here, these are not mm, the documents, but it's just like our PDF section. Now, the reason why we don't have a PDF section like this is because we don't monitor it. We don't man it. We just put the documents up there. Okay? We don't monitor it. But this is what I was looking for, this stuff right here. And I said stuff. Notice the police officer or peace officer. Now, they use the word peace officer intentionally. I give them credit for that. And notice to arresting officer. You know, for when you piss this one off, 
then he converts himself to the peace police officer and he arrests you. So, okay, notice the inquiry. I'm just saying, come on now. So, this is recommendation. If you guys want to go there and take a look, go here and take a look. Okay? And tell them that Bernie sent you. <laughs> I'm just matching your daters. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go on, let's check one more thing. Before we talk about mortgages, look at that. They're both at 100%. They both finished at the exact same time. What are the chances of that? Okay, this is what I've been going through with Frugal. Don't worry about it. Google will get what they have coming to them. I am just being patient. The arbitration is already done. Ladies and gentlemen, I will say this again. Uh, you know what? I got to undo that. I, I did go in and do that because I was uploading something else. And it was going pretty fast. So I didn't want... I know what the problem was. I, I messed up. The reason why I paused this is because I did something. What'd you do? 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 What did you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to shoot that one, okay? What I did was I changed the name because I was uploading the same video and I didn't want it to give me the error that you've already uploaded this video, you ignorant mother, and you can't do it again. See, I didn't want to get that error message because then I would have to cuss it out. But because I uploaded the video and I changed the name, oh, I didn't want to copy. See, that's what happens when the distractions. What I want to do is rename, and then I want to copy that. So I did want to copy, but I copied too soon. Copy that. Copy that. All right. Now watch this. And now B. And there we go. Yeah, we'll leave it that way. And oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, for this one, we're going to leave the comments open. That's what I said. But if you if you don't keep it cordial, whoo wee they're going to be, but we're going to do it review. You ain't going to just be able to comment just because you feel like it. Oh, no, we're going to make it subject to review. And the reason why we're going to make it subject to review, because some of you guys go off script. You're allowed to comment on the information being presented. You're allowed to comment on the information being presented. However, if you're going to bring up your idea, what you think, what you thought, then you better support that by somebody's proof. I don't want you commenting and misleading any of my people if you're going to comment let it be relevant let it be actual factual information not well this is what i think this is what i think this is what i think nobody's asking you what you think i promise you i guarantee you i'm not asking you what you think this video ain't about what you think this video is about what's really going on behind the scenes all of that Everybody's watching the yellow balloon man. Look at that. They're watching the yellow balloon. Oh, he's pickpocketing every single one of them mother. He even got his little munchkins out there pickpocketing all these people while they're watching him hold that stupid yellow balloon. You see, I'm standing in the back of the crowd. I'm the observer. Okay? I'm the watcher. And what I stand back and I watch to see is I watch to see how the creatures in their natural habitat co-mingle with one another. I watch to see how they step on one another just to get where they want to get. That's what I watch. Okay? Matter of fact, you might as well call the new YouTube channel I Watch. I, I won't do that. I know somebody already done it. But that's what I watch. I watch the behind-the-scenes stupidity. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is one other thing I need to do. Because this video went up private. I need this video to be public. So I got to get up here so that I can change that. And I think it's up here, not down there, when you look at the screen this way. And if it isn't, come on now, we're public at, there you are up here. There it is, private, privito. Okay, come on now. And it 
literally it's just that simple. I'm not going to set it as nobody's premiere because I don't need it as a premiere. I just need it as to be public so that now it'll be up. So 24 and a half hours it took to upload this one video. All right, now mortgages, 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 mortgages. Those of you with mortgages, here's what you're going to need to do. You need to understand one thing. I've been saying it over and over and over and over and over again to drill it into your heads. When you bought your property, you didn't own that property before you got the loan. You went to the bank to get a loan. You know what that loan is called? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are they holding on for? Holding on? It's very hard to do when love's gone. And that's no lie. Holding on. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Y'all didn't want to hear LTD and uh, my boy. Uh, aw. Look at that. It took away. Aw. It took away all my windows. Hold on. I got to find. I got to get one of the windows that I had open. So one second, y'all. I'll be right back, okay? Then we get to mortgages. Mortgages, mortgages, mortgages. Snossages. Mortgages. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have about an hour and 15 minutes before I have my meeting with the company. Here's the problem. I am not feeling very well this afternoon. I just haven't felt well because the weather has changed today. Usually around September 14th is when the weather changes, and I wait for September 14th because the weather changes. It literally is like going from spring to summer, and so the temperature... Right now, it's 83 degrees, and it's almost 3 o'clock. So this is what I expected, but however, it the temperature change has an effect on me. What Somebody emailed me yesterday. They wanted me to do a video on consumer credit transactions. I, I've known about the term for quite some time. I've never done any research on it. Okay, so last night I decided to dib and dab. Now, I understand what that person was looking for because it specifically he was requesting by a consumer initiated credit transaction now what he wanted was like when i was in puerto rico when i told people in order for you to uh use the money order they have to initiate the offer they have to make you an offer first and then you have to counter that offer so you can't just go up there and say i'm i'm, I'm here to buy a car uh-uh, no homie, I done did the video, told y'all you walk up there and you just start looking around and the salesman gonna come out to you because he gonna say, hey, how you doing? I need a commission. You ready to help me with get my commission? Be like, yeah, I'll help you get your commission. Well, what you, what you need in order to help me get my commission? Well, I see the cars you have here, but like I told you guys when I did the video, I'm looking for a sedan that gets at least 40 miles to the gallon that has a sunroof. What you got? Well, we don't have anything like that, really. Well, would you like to take a look at? Oh, sure, I'll take a look at it. See, he just made me two offers. Can he help me? And would I like to take a look at something? So as long as they initiate the offer, that's called a consumer initiation. You see, they initiate the offer with the consumer. Once they initiate the offer, then you didn't entrap nobody. You didn't con nobody. You didn't fool anybody. And uh, hold on, hold on. Once they accept your offer to pay with that hour style money order, you must understand this law, sorry, says that they cannot go contrary to that. Doesn't matter what the other contract says. You have a verbal agreement with the party. They accepted your offer. The moment they received that money order, they accepted your offer. Hold on. I'm not telling you guys to do that now. I'm telling you guys the way it was in the past. I'm telling the gentleman who sent me the email this information. Okay, because had he not sent me the information, I would not be able to tell you homeowners who are facing foreclosure about your mortgage. Let's find out what a consumer credit transaction is. You guys don't mind? Okay, now, look, I know you see Wisconsin and you see the other states here, uh, Minnesota and so forth, but I want you to understand what a consumer transaction is. The provisions of the act as remedial litigation, or legislation, sorry, are to be 
construed broadly in favor of the consumer to implement the congressional intent and purpose in favor of you, the consumer. You don't mind, don't, don't be afraid of being a consumer. You be eating domestic products, so don't be, don't be afraid. The transaction herein is properly defined as a consumer credit transaction within the meaning of the statute. The legal services rendered had to do with the propriety of a sale of personal property from the plaintiffs, farm and purchase of pigs, and defense of felony theft of pigs. All the services were related either to the plaintiff, household, or personal goods. Consumer household goods. It's consumer credit. Now, hold on. A consumer credit transaction. Okay. I don't want to go there because it's defined to include. So I don't want to go there just yet. I'm going to let you guys go there. Do your research on a consumer credit transaction. What I'm about to do is give you an angle that you had not thought of before. Now, the RF, and I don't know what RF stands for, but, oh, R. I don't know what R stands for. I know what um, Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. I know that's Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Oh, revised Fair Debt Collections Practice Act? That could be. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Defines a consumer credit transaction as a transaction between a natural person. Defines a consumer credit transaction, a transaction between a natural person and another person in which property, services, or money is acquired on credit by that neutral person from which the other person, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. A consumer credit transaction is a transaction in which you, the natural person, transact with another person in which property or services or money is acquired on credit by the natural person. Is acquired on credit. Oof. Man, I'm so glad we got that out. Look, it's a consumer credit transaction is when you went and you said, hey, I want to buy that house right there. Oh, I got to get a loan first? Wait, hold on. Let me go ahead and say, hey, hey, uh, Mr. Bank, Mr. Other Person, um, I want to buy that house over there. And they tell me I need to come to you to get a loan so I can go and pay them for that home. So you're going to give me a personal loan, right? All right. Oh, just my credit and my, my work history, and I don't need a co-signer? Well, sure enough, I'll give you that information. You ain't said nothing but a... Oh, please. Come on now. I got you. Okay. That's a consumer credit transaction, ladies and gentlemen. Now, pay attention. Between a natural person and another in which property, services, or money is acquired on credit by the natural person on your credit by that natural person from such other person. It was based on your credit, not nobody else's. Hold on, let's continue. As noted, the above Consumer Credit Protection Act defines a creditor. Now, this is important. I want you guys to pay attention. This is 24 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations. So there's the federal regulations. We decline to interpret 24 CFR 3500.2 and the act to mean that a general lender must be a creditor. Uh, they've been overruled on that. But that a dealer creditor cannot be a lender. Okay, moreover, we find that the Consumer Credit Protection Act defines a definition of a creditor cannot simply be the definition of a lender. Under 24 CFR 3500.2 and by extension the act because the Consumer Credit Protection Act defines the term creditor more broadly than does the 24 CFR 20 uh, 3500.2 under the federally regulated mortgage loan. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lie. It doesn't matter if it defines it more broadly. It's whether it fits the term. A lender is a creditor. We've already shown the case law for that. 
this is a case where somebody has to go in and correct them, have to rebut that presumption. And that's what's happening. People, you have to anticipate the presumption. That's why you got to go over stuff like this first so that you'll know what the argument is. Okay? And then what you do, let me show you. You take the phrase, a dealership creditor is defined as a lender under the Consumer Credit Protection Act or under the uh what is this um 24 cfr okay technically which is the consumer credit protection act <laughs> anyway under the federally related mortgage loan act okay the lender oh oh because the car dealership is not creating a mortgage actually the car dealership is creating a mortgage it is the exact same contract you're putting the car up as collateral for the loan. Don't believe me, go back and look at your auto loan. You're putting the car up as collateral, which is why they get to come and repossess the car. You're putting the car up as collateral for the loan. Ladies and gentlemen, which makes it an unsecured loan, which is why they take you to, well, they don't take you to court, they just repossess. Because they say they have the right to repossess, all they have to do is send you notice. That's a non-judicial foreclosure. You don't believe me, I just need you guys to go look at the process. When you have an automobile and you uh, default on that loan, they come and they repossess the car because the car is collateral. You gave them permission when you signed the contract. The car is collateral. However, they can only do that because they're using a non-judicial foreclosure act to take your car. They could only do that if that is a secured loan. If it's not a secured loan, that's your argument. It cannot be secured when you did not own the car prior to the loan. That means they gave you a personal loan. They don't get to come and just take your car because they feel like it. Okay? Now, the validity of the Plaintiff's Truth in Lending Act claim and the Homeowners uh, Protection Act. Homeowners, I forgot what the E stands for. Okay, claim depends on whether she was a consumer of credit. The statute defines a consumer credit transaction as, so ladies and gentlemen, that's all they're doing is extending credit to you. Whether it's your own or theirs, it doesn't matter. The Consumer Credit Code defines a creditor in part as a person to whom a debt arising from a consumer credit transaction is initially payable on the face of evidence of indebtedness. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a car dealership. Okay, consumer credit transaction includes a consumer loan. Again, that is a car dealership. I didn't make that up. All right, now why am I showing you this? Why is this so important? Well, what I want you to know is I already had it pulled up in this one, but all of the pages are gone all of a sudden. And then there is no restore for any of those pages. So I was going to go through history, and I've already clicked it to come on twice. And all of a sudden, it won't come on. So no problem. I had already remembered what I typed in yesterday. A mortgage is a consumer credit transaction. A consumer credit transaction includes a mortgage secured by the consumer's principal dwelling, other than a residential mortgage transaction a reverse mortgage transaction, or a transaction under an open-end credit plan. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Truth in Lending Act lets you know that this is a consumer credit transaction that you had with the bank. Now, what, what am I meaning by that? Because there are two things going on here that you must need to understand. That this was a personal loan. They did this to extend credit to you. They did not give you money. They extended credit. How do we know? Because that purchase qualified as a consumer credit transaction. Now, because it's a consumer credit transaction, you don't even believe. Because it's a consumer credit transaction for household goods, private goods, consumer goods, not for profit or gain. Ladies and gentlemen, a consumer credit transaction is non-taxable. Shh! You're going to have to know how to bring the argument. You're going to have to understand why it's non-taxable. So go back and look at the videos where we talk about property that are household goods, consumer goods, 
not for profit or gain. That's the first thing we need to get you to understand. A reverse mortgage is a non-recourse consumer credit transaction secured by the consumer's principal dwelling. Only if you already own the home like a reverse mortgage could they come and take your home. But in most of your cases who bought the home for the first time, they cannot come and take your property. Why can't they? Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why they can't just come and take your property is because it is not a secure loan. Does it matter if you put the house up as a security? The deed of trust section, which assigns the house as collateral, is invalid when it comes to that section. Why? Because you did not own the home in order to secure the loan. So the loan is unsecured. Pay attention. The Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act only allows for that non-judicial foreclosure if it's a secured loan. This was a consumer credit transaction. And because a mortgage is construed as a consumer credit transaction when a house is used as collateral, then you bring up the fact that it is impossible because at the time this was signed, I did not own the collateral. And even if I did own the collateral at the time this was signed, the loan preceded the signing of this document. So the loan itself was unsecured. Doesn't matter what other documents you have on the record. I don't care if you think it does. The law says it does not. The law says that it has to be a secure loan. That means the loan can't be secured after the fact. It has to be secured prior to the fact. All you got to do is pay attention and get the understanding of what I'm saying. I would love to take the time to explain, 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 but I just don't have the time to be explaining things over and over and over again to y'all. Okay, go back and pay attention. 12 CFR of Regulation Z of the Truth of Lending Act applies to this case. Under that section, a covered person must mail or deliver certain required disclosures to the consumer within 30 days of the transfer of a mortgage loan. A mortgage loan is defined as any consumer credit transaction which is secured by the principal dwelling of the consumer. By the principal dwelling. You have never dwelled in that home. Go on now. Go on. Take a look. Doesn't apply to you. Ah, but they said it was a mortgage loan. So that's where you killed them because it wasn't a mortgage loan. You could only secure that loan by your principal dwelling, not by a future principal dwelling. The loan had to be secure in the first instance. It's the loan that is secure, not the process. So when you did it at the end, you secured the process. But hold on. In order for them to challenge that, they have to go through regular court. They can't go through the expedited court system known as the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act. That 45-day system, they can't go through that system. They got to go through the long system. You know that two-hour, two days, two months, two years system? That's the one they got to go through. Who doggy, and you know how many of them foreclosures are going to be happening? 80 million, you know how many people ain't going to be able to go through that? They Because they're going to be saying, wait a minute, this wasn't a secured loan. Oh, you know what? I had a guy, he spoke to an attorney today. His conversation with the attorney, when he told him about this, he told me at first the attorney said, you can't do that. Uh, that's not how it works. Then he actually says, well, no, he didn't actually say that. What he says, he didn't know about that. I said, I know. I understand nobody's brought this argument before because they don't know chain of events. Ladies and gentlemen, it's chain of events. You've heard of chain of custody? Chain of events. I went to the bank. I asked the mother for a loan. They said, here, give me your information and I'll give you a loan. And I said, here's my information. They said, well, here's your loan, mother. Go look for a house. And I wouldn't look for a house. And they said, hey, the loan has funded. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment they tell you you are approved, you just received the loan. Okay? I, I, the moment they tell you are approved, you receive the loan. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. The moment they say you are approved, 
you've received the loan. You may not have put it in your hands, but you have an agreement. So what they tell you to do is go look for a home for that amount. Then they talk about funding. We don't give up about funding. You just told me I was approved. Guess what? They understand this. They understand that. That's why they don't use the word approved as much anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take my word for it. Just go do the research. All right, let's continue. Once you go and get the home, you can't use it to secure the loan because you've already gotten the loan. The loan's already been issued. What they do is they tell you, you ain't giving them the, you ain't giving you these keys until you sign them papers. So they hold the property hostage when it's not theirs to hold hostage. Interesting, huh? A mortgage loan is defined as a consumer credit transaction that is secured by the principal dwelling of the consumer. Okay. So, hold on. Watch this. We're going to do something. Uh, give me one second. I don't even know why I did that. It's already here. Hold on. I just put an unsecured mortgage is not a consumer credit transaction. That's all I put, ladies and gentlemen. Now, get this out of my way. I don't want to see this no more. I didn't ask you for it. Get it on out of here. A loan secured by a lien or security interest in real estate is not considered a consumer loan. As a result, it's not a consumer credit transaction. Lady, pay, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. You see all the cases we just went over that said that a mortgage is a consumer credit transaction? A loan secured by a lien or a security interest, i.e. collateral, in real estate is not considered. Who doesn't consider it? The law does. The law does. The law says it's a consumer credit transaction. We just read all of that, didn't we? The plaintiff mortgage is not a consumer credit transaction. It cannot be found unconscionable under this section. Actually, it can be. Now, hold on. The loan secured by lien is the same junk that, the same junk, the same junk that, the same junk. Uh, it's not considered a consumer loan. Well, we don't. Oh, it says result. And as a result, it's not a consumer credit transaction. Ladies and gentlemen, a loan secured by a lien. Don't worry about the. This is what you need to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to the words. Okay. I want y'all to pay attention to the words because they're not lying. The court did not lie here. A loan secured by a lien. Pay attention. That's the key word. Go ahead. Did anybody put a lien on anything when you got your loan? No, they didn't. When you went and got the loan, they didn't say nothing about we're going to be putting a lien on anything because you didn't have it. It wasn't yours. You didn't have anything for them to lien. They didn't tell you you needed to put up collateral. You had no interest in the collateral, so it is a consumer credit, credit transaction. That's what they're doing, the loan secured by a lien. You notice what they said, secured by a lien or a security interest. Well, there is no security interest because you didn't own the other property. That's why you have to go over it. You have to see what it is they're saying because, see, they're not allowed to go against the Supreme Court. Accordingly, the home loan is a debt, even if it is secured. So we already know that it's a debt. It's a consumer debt, which means they have to follow the FDCPA. Okay, that's already been decided a thousand times, even in the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. So Fourth Circuit, Tenth Circuit, uh, Sixth Circuit, all of them have already confirmed this. Some Courts have said, no, a mortgage is not, it, it is not a debt, and it's not a debt collection issue. Accordingly, a home loan is a debt. The 11th Circuit has been added this time, okay? The 11th Circuit now. Okay, anyway, 
<laughs> reverse mortgage, though, we're not talking about reverse mortgages. That's why I told you guys this is not about reverse mortgages. We're not talking about an open-ended home loan where you already own the home. Both of those, you already own the home. We're talking to those of you who you purchased the home. It doesn't matter if it's been refinanced. As long as you're in the same home you initially purchased, okay? The refinance was as a result of somebody was threatening to foreclose on you. They didn't have the right to do that, so that means that the refinance was coerced. You'll have to figure that out. You'll have to work that out. You'll have to bring that argument, okay? But I really am letting you all know, refinance means that they didn't have the right to put the home up as collateral the first time. And it was because of that which led you to agreeing to this because they said they had the right to. Go ahead. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is one thing about the consumer credit transaction that should help some of you. I want you all to pay attention. It's not a consumer debt for the purpose of the, yes, it is a consumer debt. We've already discovered that. So, but he says for the purpose of this act. So, don't go underneath the state act. Go underneath the federal act. Why? Because this was uh, a matter involving interstate commerce. So it falls under federal, not state. Well, the property was registered and it was done in the state. It may have been done in the state and it may be registered in the state. However, everything was done under federal law. Go and look at the application. Go ahead. There ain't no California deed of trust. Go ahead. It's all under the Single Family Act. Go ahead and take a look, ladies and gentlemen. Everything was done under federal law, not under state law. It's all right. Now, if you want to rely on the Federal Act, then you have to explain and don't use the code. Use the, what is that stupid thing called? Statute at large. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can hear it in my voice how tired I is. Got one more thing to mention to you, that one more thing that should work. Those of you who, when you purchased your property originally, go into the court and do a summary judgment and have it documented on the record that this was an unsecured loan, put on the record just the motion, the motion format, and say, petition for summary judgment supported by affidavit. And then start the beginning, I do hereby attest and affirm the following based on firsthand knowledge as well as information, colon. In your first paragraph, you're gonna state, on this date, I approach whatever bank it was, for a loan so that I could, uh, no, for a personal loan, just that simple, not for what you needed to do with the loan. You applied to them for a personal loan because that's exactly what you did. Then you say, on this day, they announced to me that I had been approved for the loan. So I chose to go out and to look for a property, real property, because I needed to invest in my ability to pursue happiness and to own property. Then your next line, you'll say, the bank, after all the inspections, decided to issue me the loan so that I could pay the owner of the property for the property for which I was interested. Then you put the definition for a secured loan. A secured loan is and you put the legal definition. Then the next paragraph you say, this transaction with the name of the bank could not be defined under law as a secured loan, comma, as there appears to be no wiggle room under the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act for what constitutes a secured loan and what does not. Then you go to the next paragraph. I need a judgment from this court documenting that if a loan is not secured by collateral, whereby a person who is putting the collateral as security for the loan has an actual interest, comma, is not defined in our statutes as a secured loan. Then you put the next paragraph. I do hereby attest 
as well as affirm that to the best of my knowledge and to the best of the records that were made public at the time, that I did not own. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have to get back to these people that I did not own this property, that I did not own the collateral. And then you finish your document. You're just making a simple request. Should be a page and a half is all. It's $47. Do it on a state level or federal level. All right, ladies and gentlemen, consumer mortgage transaction. Got to remember it. You got to love it. All right. I will speak to you later. Take care, everybody. I'm out of here. Hey, 5,000, 4,500, 56, 46, 78, hot. Got to go.